Hey, you know, I've noticed that a lot of times we have a hard time getting along with people. People have a hard time getting along with me. I have a hard time getting along with them, right? Like we don't always do relationships super well and harmony in our relationships sometimes is hard work. And in this video, I want to look at a passage of scripture that I believe teaches the single most powerful principle for how we can get along with each other. It's found in Philippians chapter two, and I want to read the context so we can set up really the, the point and the purpose of this passage. Listen to these words from Philippians chapter two. The apostle Paul writes, Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if there's any affection and compassion, make my joy complete. How do you do that? Well, by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. To hear all those phrases about harmony, unity, getting along, working together, being on the same page together, intent on one purpose. And he's about to tell us how to do that. He's about to give us the principle. And it's a principle that applies to churches. It's a principle that applies to um, teams on a job or sports teams. It's a principle that applies to your friendship. It's a principle that applies to your marriage. What he's about to tell us is the single most important principle for being harmonious in your relationships, for getting along with people, for being one in spirit. Listen to what he says, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Paul says these words. He says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. And that word translated selfishness there is the idea of selfish ambition. It's the idea of rivalry, of like having to get your own way, like always fighting to get ahead, always looking for an angle, always looking for an advantage for yourself, like always trying to promote yourself and always hoping you, you know, things come around and you get something out of it. That's the idea of the selfish ambition, the selfishness. So do nothing from that kind of spirit. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit where you're always thinking of yourself and it's about you. Instead, with humility of mind, with lowliness of mind, listen, consider one another more important than yourself. Instead of uh, asking what's in it for me, instead of asking what do I get out of it, how does it benefit me, ask how can I best serve you, what's in it for you, what's, what's, if I'm going to look out for number one, well you're going to be number one and I'm going to care about you more than I care about myself, consider one another as more important than yourself. And then Philippians 2, 4, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. When uh, my kids were growing up and they got old enough to stay home by themselves, fairly young still, but old enough to stay home by themselves for a few hours. My wife and I would go out to an event or maybe go out on a date or something like that. We'd leave the kids at home and we had been, you know, having them memorize this passage of scripture for quite a while. And uh, My son is older than my daughter and so um, I wanted him to begin thinking about, all right, someday, Jeff, you're going to be married and you're going to have a wife and you're going to have kids and you've got to start thinking in terms of what's best for them, not what's in it for me. And so I, I asked Jeff, I said, all right, Jeff, we're leaving and I'm going to leave you in charge since you're older. And what does it mean for you to be in charge? He kind of hemmed and hawed and he kind of wondered what that meant. And um, he meant that, you know, obviously I'm in control. And I said, exactly. Now, what does that mean? And I pointed him to Philippians chapter two. I said, you know, this passage that we've been reading and you've been memorizing, um, it means, you know, you consider Ashley more important than yourself. You don't look out for your own interest. You look out for her interest. And Ashley, you also do the same thing for Jeff. So that while we're gone over the next few hours, you guys all get along. You can work together. Do you hear that principle? Like what Paul is saying in short is, you first, not me first. You first, not me first. What's best for you? What do you need? How can I take care of you? How can I serve you? Consider you first, not me first. And that is the single most powerful principle for getting along with one another. Man, I'm telling you, that has the power to transform our relationships. If we're always fighting to get our own way, if we're always looking to advantage ourselves, that just leads to friction and tension and conflict. But if on the other hand, we'll lower ourselves and humble ourselves and say, look, I wanna do what's best for you. And if the other person in that relationship even has that same spirit, so that in marriage or on, on the job, if you, if you cultivate this kind of humility, it has the power to revolutionize 
our relationships. And so uh, as you look at your life and as you look at your relationships, um, take the wisdom of the Apostle Paul to heart. This wisdom that was modeled by Jesus, this wisdom that is at the heart uh, of God's way of life and say, I'm not going to live for my own advantage. I'm not going to live for what's in it for me. I'm not going to consider my needs, my interests first. I'm going to serve you, you first not me first. And I'm firmly convinced that if you and I and more and more people live this way, it would revolutionize our relationships. Hey, my name is John and thanks for checking out the 5-Minute Bible Study. Uh, you, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel so that you never miss an episode and we'll talk again soon.